Today is the 17th March 1998. <clears throat> Yesterday <clears throat> we dealt with the Four Noble Truth briefly and uh, how a meditator <clears throat> realizes the first truth the truth of suffering <clears throat> through his personal experience or through his direct experience of Dhamma. <clears throat> yes, today also we <clears throat> continue the topic <clears throat> Everyone doesn't want to have any suffering at all. Each and everyone wants to be happy and peaceful. <clears throat> no one doesn't want, no one wants to have any kind of a suffering. This is suffering, dukkha. <clears throat> has three forms of it the kind. <clears throat> the first one, dukkha, dukkha. The second, we prinama dukkha. The third, Sankara Dukkha. All of these three forms of the Dukkha rise from both mental and physical phenomena, Nama and Rupa. Then, when this Nama and Rupa, that, uh, how this Nama and Rupa <clears throat> arises should be analyzed. <clears throat> and according to Buddhist philosophy, Nama and Rupa, mental and physical phenomena, constitutes so-called a person, a being. Then how this person or being <clears throat> comes to exist because <clears throat> the anyone who is attached to existence is a subject to rebirth. because of uh, that attachment for existence, he has to be reborn again. When he has to take rebirth, when he takes a rebirth, that rebirth consists in nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. So this is a physical and mental phenomenon which is taken to be a person, a being itself. 
rise as a dependent on the attachment. Then why does the attachment arise? Or how does the attachment arise? The attachment arises depending on feeling or sensation with na. Attachment is a tanna. <clears throat> feeling or sensation is a weird na. When there arises an unpleasant sensation and a person, he wants to have pleasant sensation or he wants to feel pleasant sensation or he has a desire to feel pleasant sensation. Because of an unpleasant sensation, there arises a desire for pleasant sensation. To feel a pleasant sensation, he does any unwholesome actions or wholesome actions. Unwholesome actions Akusla Kama. Wholesome actions, Kusla Kama. So that wholesome actions or unwholesome action is caused by <clears throat> attachment. But this attachment is regarded as grasping because um, when the attachment is uh, weak, it's uh, called uh, tanna, just attachment. When attachment becomes stronger and stronger, then it's uh, called uh, grasping. The weak attachment is a tanna. The grasping is a upadana. Because <clears throat> he grasps the rebirth. So to have rebirth or to be reborn, he does any wholesome actions or unwholesome actions. So this wholesome, wholesome actions produced the rebirth and woeful states of existence. Unwholesome action produced and woeful states of existence or miserable life. Wholesome actions produces wholesome life or a good life, a luxurious life. So because of wholesome deed or actions, a person is reborn and a higher world, such as a human, Deva and Brahma, celestial, celestial lamp realm. Because of an unwholesome action, passing is reborn 
in a lower world such as animal life or hell or any realm of the country hungry ghost and so on. Or either higher existence or lower existence. Both consist and nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. So this is nama and rupa, mental and physical phenomena. Arises dependent on the actions, either wholesome actions or unwholesome action. It's called karma. Either wholesome actions or unwholesome action, wholesome deed or unwholesome deed. It's called karma. That karma arises dependent on grasping, stronger attachment, or powerful attachment. That grasping, upadana, stronger attachment, arises dependent on weak attachment, which is called tanna attachment. Then that dana or attachment arises dependent on feeling or sensation, either pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. <clears throat> then that feeling sensation, feeling or sensation arises depending on the contact, the contact between six sense doors and six sense objects. Six things those, as you know, are eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Six things objects are visible things, audible things, smell, odor, or scent, or taste, and tangible thing and mind object. When <clears throat> the eye contact with visible object, there arises eye consciousness. Here, eye consciousness is a direct translation of uh, Pali Wat. Pali Wat is I is the Chaku, consciousness Vinyana. I consciousness means Chaku Vinyana in Pali. <coughs> Here, I consciousness means the consciousness of being or wishing or seeing. Because there's an eye, there's a visible object. The two contacts, then there arises the consciousness of a seeing the visible object. The consciousness of a seeing visible object is called the chakku vinyana, eye consciousness. When the consciousness of a CM, the consciousness dependent on 
<clears throat> eyes, one of the six senses do. <clears throat> Contacts the object and then arises the consciousness of a seeing. When the consciousness was here arises, as I told you in my previous talks, there are some mental concomitants, cheat seekers or mental associates, that arise together with that consciousness, such as a feeling, perception, <clears throat> attention, volition, psychic left one pointedness. If the visible object is a good when the mind the one of the mental factor <clears throat> together with the consciousness the judges this object is a good, then there arises a pleasant sensation. When that mental factor, a mental concomitant, judges it to be bad, there arises aversion or anger, or there arises an unpleasant sensation. <clears throat> Because of a pleasant sensation, there arises an attachment to the object. Because of an unpleasant sensation, there arises a desire to have pleasant sensation. <clears throat> the desire also the same as attachment. Then these attachments, tanha or desire, tanha, arises dependent on pleasant or unpleasant feeling or sensation, vidana. This pleasant or unpleasant sensation arises dependent on the contact between six things dots and uh, six things object. Then why how does it the six things dots arise as them? This is six six things do arises dependent on the process of incessant process of a mental and physical phenomena. Only we have in us the, the process of a mental and physical phenomena, Nama and Rupa. There arises eyes, ears, nose, tongue and so on. When you have a free eye, we have a eyes. Eyes contact the visible object when there's a, the object. Ear contacts an audible object when there's object. In this way, the six sense doors, eye, ear, nose, and so on, causes the contact to arise. So six, six sense doors are the causes of a contact. In another word, the contact arises dependent on six sense doors. This is six sense doors arises dependent on nama and rupa, the process of a mental and physical phenomena. The process of a mental and physical phenomenon arises dependent on the first consciousness of an existence, 
we call it a pati sandhichita. It's a rebirth consciousness. When there arises rebirth consciousness together with its material phenomena, then there arises another consciousness, the process of another consciousness, and the process of another physical phenomena. So, incessant process of mental and physical phenomena arises depending on the first consciousness of an existence, which is a rebirth consciousness. It's called Vijnana. Then that river consciousness again arises depending on action, wholesome or unwholesome action. This wholesome or unwholesome action is called Sankara. <clears throat> but without these uh, actions uh, are, and uh, sorry, when these uh, actions are not associated with attachment, then no person will be reborn because um, there's uh, no attachment for another existence or rebirth. Though they are wholesome actions or unwholesome actions, wholesome deeds or unwholesome deeds, there won't be rebirth as their result because these actions or deeds are not associated with attachment. Only when these actions <clears throat> are the associated with attachment. Here associated means sometimes the Attachment, the actions is preceded by attachment. Sometimes the action is done together with attachment. Though the attachment, uh, the action is done to, together with attachment, but the cause is the cause of this action is a grasping, stronger attachment. That stronger attachment is caused by ordinary attachment or weak attachment. Then. <clears throat> When does this attachment arise? Because the person is ignorant of suffering and the exist and, and existence. If we have an existence that existence is composed of both the mental and physical phenomena. When we have any mental phenomenon or physical phenomena, we are sure to have suffering because either mental phenomena or physical phenomena is not permanent. They 
arise and then very instantly pass away. So, so called the existence or life means the process of the processes of ever changing phenomena, mental and physical phenomena. Never last even a million of a second. This is called Sankara Dukkha, suffering by change, or suffering through rising in personal way. But we do not realize that the life is consists of ever changing phenomena. So we take this life to be permanent, at least until we die. So, because we are ignorant of this state of mental and physical phenomena, we want to be reformed, or we have attachment for rebirth. So that attachment, when it becomes a stronger, cause the action, then the action ca causes rebirth. Here, ignorance is avijja in Pali. Because of uh, this ignorance, uh, there arises attachment and there arises uh, the actions for to be reborn. So these uh, actions Either um, <coughs> wholesome action or unwholesome action is called sankara. So it's called avijja pachaya sankara. The meaning is <coughs> wholesome or unwholesome action arises dependent on ignorance together with attachment. Then that wholesome or unwholesome action produce rebirth. The first consciousness of another existence together with its physical phenomena. So that action is called sankara. And that rebirth, the first consciousness of a rebirth consciousness is called a vijnana. Sankara pachya vijnana. Rebirth consciousness rises dependent on the actions which is done in the past existence, the previous existence. So the actions which is done in the previous existence is the cause. The rebirth consciousness and next existence is a result or effect. It's called Sankara Pajya Vinyana. Then when there's a rebirth consciousness, After its passing away, naturally, there are the processes of um, many different consciousnesses, several consciousnesses, arising and passing away. And also their physical phenomenon too. In this way, there are the process of uh, incessant process of uh, mental and physical phenomena, nama and rupa. 
It's called Vijnana Pachya Nama Rupa. Mental and physical phenomena arise dependent on the first consciousness we call the Padita Sandichita, river consciousness. Then when we have the process of uh, incessant processes of several consciousness and uh, mental phenomena, then there arises eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Six sense doors or six sense base. Then these six sense doors or bases are called Tala Yatana and Bali. Here, Nama Rupa Pachya Salayatana. The six sins doors or visits arise depending on incessant processes of mental and physical phenomena. Then, when we have six sins to eye, ear, nose, tongue, and so then one day or one day and that eyes contact with contact visible object, the ear contact audible object, sound of voice, the nose contact smile, the tongue contest taste, the body contacts tangible things. The mind contacts the mind object. Because of this contact, there arises a consciousness of a seeing, consciousness of a hearing, consciousness for smelling, consciousness for taste, consciousness for touch, and a consciousness of mind object. Then here, that contact arises depending on the six sins doors, salayadana. So it is called salayadana pachya paso. Contact here means a pasa in Bali. Salayadana pachya paso. The six sins do causes the contact to arise. Contact the pasa. When there is a contact with the object, there is a feeling, pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. That feeling arises dependent on contact. So it's called pasa pachya vidana. Because of the contact, there arises the feeling or sensation. When there is a feeling, there arises desire, craving, lust, love, attachment to about this the object, either visible object or audible object, smell also, taste or body, tangible thing. So yeah, the feeling is the cause of uh, attachment or desire, dana. It's uh, called pasapajya vidana vidana pajya dana. Vidana pajya dana. The dana or attachment is a uh, conditioned through feeling or sensation. A feeling or sensation causes the desire or attachment to arise. When 
vetana or attachment or desire or craving grows stronger and stronger because the meditator does not observe it, does not note it. So it doesn't <coughs> disappear, but it becomes, grows, grows and stronger and stronger. Then that state of attachment, stronger attachment is called grasping Ubadana. Here, Tanna Bhajya Ubadana, this is Ubadana, grasping, arises dependent on the attachment, Tanna. Then, because of the stronger attachment, about the visible thing, object or audible object, or about rebirth or existence, another existence. So to have the object or another existence, then the person performs any wholesome actions or unwholesome actions. So these are wholesome or unwholesome actions arise depending on grasping, upadana. So it is a culture, upadana pachya bhava. Here bhava means action, wholesome or unwholesome action. It's a called Kama Bhava. <clears throat> then, that wholesome or unwholesome action produces rebirth consciousness and next existence. Wholesome or unwholesome actions in the previous existence is the cause of the river consciousness and nice existence. But none of the action or mental states transmigrate to another existence. Any verbal actions or physical action together with the Chetana, volition, motive, arises and passes away, but there is a, a kame force. It means that the force of the action is remained in the process of a consciousness. That force, when it's a powerful, it produces Rebirth consciousness, the first consciousness in its existence. None of mental states of physical phenomena is a permanent. So, they arise and then very easily passes away, but there is a force of volition or action and the process of uh, the following exist uh, consciousness. So when the last consciousness of uh, the first, the previous uh, existing has uh, disappeared, there come a force produce uh, rebirth consciousness and another existence. So here, what we should notice is none of a mental phenomena or physical phenomena transmigrate to another existence. They arise and pass away in the previous existence, but 
they have their force. That's it's a called a kame force. That force produces the rebirth consciousness and its existence. By the power of uh, attachment. Then there's a rebirth consciousness. That rebirth is called a jati. That jati is caused by the actions, karma bhava, wholesome or unwholesome action in the previous existence. So this is jati. When there is a rebirth, there, uh, there arises an incessant processes of uh, consciousnesses and the mental, uh, the physical phenomena. So every phenomena has a N3 state, the right rising, decay, and passing away. Rising, decay, and passing away. So when there's a jati, jati causes this decay, jara, to arise. Then, eventually, <clears throat> that jati causes that existence disappeared or stopped. Then it's a called a person who is reborn and then dies. That death is marana. So jati pachya jara marana. Decay and death are caused by <coughs> bath or jati ripath. Unless a person is born, he will die. Because he is born, he is subject to death, he has to die. If he is not born, he won't die. But here he is born. He has a god, jati, so eventually he has to die. Before he died, his mental and physical phenomenon gets through the state of a decay. So this decay, jara, and death, marana, is caused by jati. It's called jati pajya jara marana. But there, uh, before he dies, he is uh, full of uh, suffering. He is uh, endowed with uh, many varieties of uh, suffering. Soka, he feel worry, sorrow, anxiety, pretty well. Sometimes uh, he lament, he has lamentation, dukkha, pain, physical pain, because of a disease or illness, or because of a weather, or because of a food. For any reason, he gets a physical pain, dukkha. Then dominus are grief, sadness, rises depending on many reasons in his life. Then dukkha, dominus, upayasa, desperation. Sometimes he feels desperate because he can't cope with his life. 
these sorrow, worry, pain, lamentation, grief, sadness, desperation arise dependent on rebirth. Because he was born, he has such a innumerable kinds of dukkha, suffering, such as worry, sorrow, lamentation, and so on. Unless he is born, he is reborn. Unless he is reborn, he won't have any of this suffering, this dukkha. Uh, I, before I continue to explain three types of dukkha, suffering, uh, I think I should say Pali words. Jyati Pajaya Jaramarana. The Ripati said, the cause, decay and death are effects. Soka Pridewa Dukha Domana Supaya Sa Sambhavanti. Worry, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, desperation are caused also by rebirth. Then the Buddha continued to say, Ewa me tasa keolasa dukkha kamsa tasa smuriyo hodi. In this way, a very big heap of dukkha suffering arises in life. So life means uh, the, the train of uh, sufferings, but we are ignorant of it. We dilute that the life is a permanent. None of uh, mental or physical phenomena is uh, impermanent or a permanent. Then we take the, the everlasting person or self or soul. Because uh, we do not realize, do not understand, the instant and constant rises and passes away, rising and passing away of a mental and physical phenomena, which constitute so-called an existence. So we are attached to the existence that attachment causes the existence. From the very first consciousness of the existence until the last consciousness of that existence, we are all the time suffering, both mentally and physically. Yes, all of these sufferings are summarized by the Buddha in three types. Or the Dukkha is classified in three groups. The first one is Dukkha Dukkha. The second is Viprinama Dukkha. The third is <coughs> Sankara Dukkha. I think you have grasped the summary of uh, this uh, causal relation. I have explained to you. It's uh, called uh, dependent origination, Padija Samubhada. Padija Samubhada. <clears throat> so, in the end, uh, the Buddha said, 
a great heap of this suffering arises in this way as a cause and effect uh, according to the law of uh, condition or causal relation. So this is suffering is divided into three. The first one is the dukkha dukkha. It's called suffering of suffering. It means a common suffering, common dukkha. Because common dukkha and also the 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 dukkha which must be easily perceived by every sentient being such as mental suffering physical suffering mental suffering such as sadness worry sorrow anxiety depression dejection disappointment and so on they are very easily perceived by a sentient being because every sentient being is a subject to these sufferings and so past suffering and physical suffering physical dukkha such as pain stiffening itching numbness any of a physical disease any accident or <coughs> any hurt or harm to physical phenomena. These are very evident to every living being. So they are called Dukkha Dukkha. But these, these, this type of Dukkha Dukkha also regarded is, is regarded as suffering by a human being when he uh, come across it. If he does not come across it, he may not regard it as a suffering. Then the, the, the second one is Viprinama Dukkha. <clears throat> suffering produced by change. It refers to so-called happiness. Happiness is sukha, is regarded as a sukha, not dukkha, but actually that happiness it does not last long. It arises um, it pass, passes away and changes into suffering in a short time. So it's the called um, suffering produced by change. The third dukkha suffering is Sankara dukkha. Sankara dukkha here means uh, Constant and instant arising and passing away of a phenomena. That's a Sankara Dukkha. Whatever phenomena, mental, mental or physical, arises and then very instantly passes away, it doesn't last even a millionth of a second. Then arises and then passes away, then arises and then passes away. When a meditator with his shaft inside <clears throat> penetrates into the constant and instant arising and passing away of either mental states or physical process. He takes it to be bad dukkha suffering. He doesn't take it good because he sees it ever changing, constant rising and passing away. Sometimes if 
a meditator experience say the happy feeling and emotional states then he should note denote happy 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 because uh, is a meditation is a good concentration is a good the insights arises uh, very clearly but at that because because of that he is happy then he note happy 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 when is a concentration on the happiness deep enough he, he come to realize uh, the happiness it is it doesn't last long happiness arises he note then it passes away there another happiness arises he don't notes then it passes away in this way with every note the happiness passes passes away then he come to realize this is a dukkha suffering incessant and constant rising passing away of the phenomena then he come to realize any mental states or any physical process is the not permanent they are transient so they are suffering dukkha this dukkha is called as sankara dukkha meditator must realize this is sankara dukkha not only dukkha dukkha and vipassana dukkha that's why when the commentary the ace play the the word dukkha it is said dukkha here means uh, the nature of a being oppressed by an incessant constant arising and passing away this is a dukkha <coughs> of uh, the, the three characteristics the first characteristic is impermanence it's very easily perceived when meditator does a concentration is good enough but the second one is a dukkha that dukkha covers all the three types of dukkha so only when a meditator penetrates into sankara dukkha the nature of a being oppressed by constant and instant rising and passing away of a phenomena then he won't have any idea of a i or you me or my a person or a being itself because of what he realizing is instant and constant rises and passes away of a phenomena there he didn't find any person there he do not find he does not find any being there he does not find any self everlasting self there he does not find everlasting soul then here he comes to realize anatta in person in personality no self no soul <coughs> so meditator must comes to realize this is suffering of a sankara sankara dukkha only then he won't be attached to any mental states of physical process which constitute so called a person a being is a boy soul so may all of you rightly understand this chain of uh, existence and chain of a suffering and the dream of a suffering and just try your best to get rid of it <coughs>